Hey guys, welcome to The Market is Open. Check out our website, themarketisopen.com. In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Octovalve and innovation going on at Tesla. Octovalve is something that Elon Musk is super proud of. I believe it was on the Third Row Tesla podcast where he mentioned that he keeps part of this on his desk at home because it's a great engineering feat by the team at Tesla. Now, Sandy Monroe, a car specialist who takes apart cars for a living, and his team have started to take the Octovalve apart. So I wanted to dive in and look closely at what he had to say about this system inside the Model Y. But first, please hit the bell button to subscribe and be notified of upcoming Tesla videos and smash the like button to help support this video. We'd super appreciate that. Also, you can support us further on Patreon at patreon.com slash the market is open and we give a shout out to our patrons at the end of each video. Sandy Monroe has been tearing apart the Tesla Model Y with his team. This is actually the first electric vehicle that he says he's recommending to people, to his friends, which is a big change for Sandy. While Tesla's quality has drastically increased since the launch of the Model 3, a vehicle which he actually says he didn't recommend to anybody, he still has a couple of problems with the early versions of his Model Y vehicle, most of the issues on the outside facing the consumer. Which is interesting because Tesla demand for Model 3 has been absolutely outstanding, and Model Y is poised to outsell Model 3 by a huge margin. I personally think Model Y could be four or five times more popular than the Model 3, especially given the much larger size of the SUV uh, slash crossover market. But I find it interesting that when you ask a car specialist, they look at the fine details and the flaws, whereas regular consumers don't seem to notice or care. For example, Model 3 had panel gap issues, which nobody really cared about at all, except for the media. Model Y improves on the Model 3 in every way. However, even with the Model Y, Sandy has issues with the paint. He says paint is one of the biggest issues, although he did give Tesla a recommendation of a paint expert who could help them fix up their factory. At the same time, however, Tesla is constructing a new state-of-the-art paint facility in Berlin, but that won't be ready for at least a year, but it'll have sort of a three-dimensional look to the paint. It'll have multiple layers, uh, which will be really cool, but that doesn't fix the problems at Fremont. Uh, one of the main causes of paint issues is dirt, which would likely be due to the fact that the factory space in Fremont may be older and dirtier than Tesla's new, newer state-of-the-art factories. Again, Sandy does have an early version of the vehicle. I believe it was in the first 200, around 200 vehicles that were produced because of the VIN number, and Tesla has been known to make many improvements over time. Nevertheless, Sandy Monroe is simply amazed when it comes to the internals of the Model Y, particularly the new Octovalve and heat pump. This is also something that Monroe sells reports for after he takes it apart. He has diagrams and such explaining how it works, and he sells these reports to pretty much anyone who wants to buy them, but mainly it's going to be Tesla's competitors. So this is sort of a double-edged sword. In one case, he's giving away Tesla's secrets. On the other hand, he's also made recommendations for Tesla for free, by publicly tearing this vehicle apart, something that he's never done before. And it also gives Tesla some great publicity and lets the public see directly some of the many innovations that are going into this vehicle, which I think really gets people excited about what's under the hood. When Monroe first took apart the Model 3, he was amazed to find the Super Bottle, Tesla's central heating, ventilation, and cooling system that brings heat and cold to wherever it's needed in the vehicle. This is something that Sandy Monroe had never seen before in a vehicle. Normally, different units in a car may be made by different manufacturers and companies. Because Tesla is vertically integrated, they control all aspects of the vehicle and can connect them all together with this super bottle. This is a huge advantage for Tesla as their company is structured in such a way that fosters innovation. So even if a competitor were to have Sandy's report, it's still not that easy to simply copy Tesla and cut out half of their suppliers, for example, redo their entire organizational structure, and somehow coordinate that all of the other aspects of the vehicle will work seamlessly together in a centralized super bottle type system. Also, as Sandy has worked for large car manufacturers before, getting new ideas and innovations through a multi-layer bureaucracy that has been building up for over a century is normally not that easy. He even shows an intake manifold from 1998 for a BMW product, which is similar but larger and heavier than Tesla's new design, seen on the right, but it's made for lower volume. However, it shows that Tesla is taking what Sandy believes are great ideas and making them even better. And they also take a lot of things from the aerospace industry, which makes sense since there's likely a lot of ex-NASA employees working at the company that were scooped up years ago. 
So let's talk about the Octovalve, the next version or the successor of the Super Bottle, and it resides at the center of the Model Y's HVAC system and will control the heating and cooling of the vehicle in a very compact and centralized way, similar of course to the Super Bottle. The Octavalve provides the valves and connections between the sources of heating and cooling to where they need to go within the vehicle. In this picture, all of the different parts and tubes are present and it's also attached to the heat pump that so far will only be found in the Model Y, not the Model 3. It's possible that Tesla eventually backports it to the Model 3. However, this entire structure is small and compact. According to Monroe's president, the whole heat pump is packaged in a space the size of a suitcase. That's likely going to make it lighter and cheaper than competing solutions, especially what's out in the market right now. And of course, the heat pump is helping to give the Model Y a larger and heavier vehicle, of course, about the same range as the Model 3. So it will work well in cold temperatures and save energy this way. Now this is the Octavalve itself which contains 8 channels and Monroe states that under the Octopus logo there's a 4 position stepper motor and that changes positions based on whatever action is required by the cooling system and we'll look at this more in a few moments. However, Sandy Monroe calls this design genius. He says, the little valve here is like genius. I really wish that more people would look at how to take a bunch of functions and turn it into one. So Tesla is really consolidating and making things more compact. I think that competitors are still trying to catch up or figure out how the super bottle works while Tesla is already onto the next octa valve and likely has begun working on their next version for next generation vehicles. So the fact that Sandy Monroe calls this genius tells me that the auto industry hasn't really seen anything like this before and Tesla's lead in engineering and design is widening as far as I'm concerned. But wait, there's more. So this is the base of the manifold which is made from aluminum and Sandy believes this is what Elon Musk is referring to when he says he keeps this piece on his desk at home. This part shifts the flow to the various parts of the cooling system using the tubes connected to it. Now one thing that Sandy Monroe mentions which looks like a marker drawn on the metal but it's actually a cutout to separate the parts and give them room to move as they expand and contract since the system is dealing with multiple hot and cold temperatures. One thing I really like about Tesla is that even if you have the part in your hands, it's not so easy to just copy it or even figure out what it does. And additionally, Tesla makes its own materials, their own alloys. The materials engineer who works at Tesla also works at SpaceX. So you're really getting rocket ship technology in your Tesla already. And I think that makes it all the more difficult for competitors to replicate what Tesla has already done. Additionally, even Sandy Monroe's team is still trying to figure out everything that the Octavalve is capable of. He mentions it's still taking them some time to figure out what the functions of the last two out of eight valves do. So it still seems fairly complex and secretive. And of course Monroe needs to make money selling reports with this valuable information. There's also a plastic coolant manifold made out of molded nylon. The Octavalve sits right there as you can see, but this piece also fits like a puzzle in the aluminum manifold. Like so. So it's extremely compact and it's molded very accurately such that when it's assembled there should be very little chance of leaking according to Sandy. Now he seems to be incredibly excited about this product. He's like, can we talk about this? It's pretty crazy because you wouldn't normally find something like this in a car. It's usually seen in the aerospace industry like for a jet engine fuel system. I honestly think that the other car manufacturers are damaging their brands by coming out with products that are subpar such that when they get better, people will already associate their brands with inferior products if they haven't already. At the same time, after seeing this, I think it's building significant credibility for Tesla as the community grows and fans of other car companies start to pay attention to the engineering prowess behind Tesla's products. Now, I thought this was kind of cool from Tesla's patent showing a couple different modes for the Octovalve. It has the ability to heat and cool the cabin, the battery system, and the drivetrain. Also, the heat pump itself, which is built like a circuit board with no tubes, can spool up to heat the vehicle much more quickly than the resistive heater in the Model 3. When it's at a certain temperature, the control electronics on board can detect that and open the valve when it's ready. The onboard compressor is also capable of operating in an efficient mode and a lossy mode in order to generate heat, and the heat pump can use ambient air as a heat source. Sandy Monroe says the Octovalve has a short circuit to help generate heat more quickly. Now these things are something that will help solve the problem of a cold battery and vehicle in the winter time, which is always cut into the range of the vehicle. So according to the patent, here are some examples of the Octovalve in action. In the diagram 1202, the battery system coolant loop and the drivetrain coolant loop are operating in parallel. In 1204, those two things are operating in series. In 1206, the compressor is operating as a heater with recirculating coolant. And in 1208, the heat pump is the source of heat from the ambient air via the radiator, with ambient air being modestly cold. 
So we saw what the octovalve looks like, how compact it is, and now we're seeing that it's quite ingenious at using this single component for all sorts of different functionality for heating and cooling a vehicle. They can route the so-called traffic wherever they want, and it's not done by anyone else in the industry like this. So I think this is what makes Tesla a fascinating company and they're going to continue improving this and give the industry a run for its money. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in other stocks, we have our TMIO channel where we discuss a whole bunch of other companies. We recently did a video on Southwest Airlines and we have one on Beyond Meat. I'll put a link in the description below. Now don't forget to hit the like button to support this video. We'd super appreciate that. You can subscribe by hitting the bell button to be notified of upcoming Tesla videos and join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash the market is open where we give a shout out to our patrons at the end of each video. Thanks so much for watching.